Hi everyone, it's Lauren. I have a tag video for you today. I'm going to be doing the New York Times by the book tag. This tag was created by Marie Berg and I was tagged to do it by Max at Well Done Books and by Jacob Tanner. So I'll link all three of their videos in the description bar below. So the first question is what book is on your nightstand now? So let me show you. So hey, this is what my nightstand looks like. It's pretty messy. There's not kind of one single book on there. Over here I have the books that I read just before I go to bed. So I've got The Bookshop Book by Jen Campbell and Shakespeare's Sonnets with a nasty receipt on it, which is lovely. And I read a little excerpts of these or a couple of sonnets or something just before going to bed normally. I also have a little bear that Chintzia got me for Valentine's Day. Maneki Neko, which was a gift from my boss from Japan uh, when we were struggling to find a flat. And so she was a good luck charm, which helped us get this one. This is a rock, which I got, uh, me and Will got on the beach in Blakeney Point, which is in Norfolk. And this is a picture of us a really long time ago. <laughs> Look at that hair. And then I have two piles. This one on the right is all the books that I plan to read very soon. So this is stuff that I will have featured in my TBR and I often have the books that I've just read as well in this pile. And then on the left is stuff that I've recently got, bought or been sent but haven't hauled yet. So I've got a couple of new books here. And at the moment it's kind of a really big pile because I'm also keeping the Bailey's Prize shortlisted books here because I know I'm going to have to read them soon and probably use them to do discussion videos and stuff. So I want them easily accessible and not under my bed. <laughs> Question two is what is the last truly great book that you read and for me that has to be The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison which I read last year. That was my first Toni Morrison and I was really um, surprised not only by how moving the content of the story was but also how beautiful and poetic um, the writing was and for me that was kind of a perfect book. It linked beautiful beautiful poetic prose um, with some really important heart-hitting topics on racism and sexism and the history of the Deep South in America at that time and it also jumped between characters and gave you different viewpoints and it, it just was all woven together just so so wonderfully and I really really enjoyed it. Question three is if you could meet any writer dead or alive who would it be and what would you ask them? Now I've never been someone who's wanted to meet writers in real life. I don't feel like that with anyone really. I, I'm one of those people who's kind of you should never meet your idols but also if I met a famous person or an author I just feel Feel like I wouldn't have anything to say to them so yeah, there's never been anyone who I've really wanted to meet so I guess I would say William Shakespeare and I would just ask him what are the answers to all the questions that scholars have deliberated over for years tell me tell me question four is what books might we be surprised to find on your shelves now I don't think there's any books that I have that anyone would be surprised that I own I do read quite widely and fairly varied I suppose um, and I can't really think of anything that would be a surprise or maybe like a bit of a guilty pleasure or something. So I don't think I'm very surprising, I'm afraid. Sorry. Question five is how do you organise your personal library? <laughs> well, at the moment, all of my books are completely unorganised because they are under my bed, because I don't have any shelves in my new flat yet. Even though we've lived here for a year, we still don't have any shelves up. Um, previously, I was very, very particular about having my books in alphabetical order by the author's name, and then each author's um, works <laughs> I would organise by like the date to release so they'd be in, in time order unless they were part of a series and I'd keep that series together so I was always quite finickety about how I would organise my books. In our new house we're probably going to have a couple of little areas in different rooms where I will organise my books so I think I'm going to be organising them a little bit differently. So in our bedroom we're going to have a bit more of a black and white theme so I will probably have all my little black classics together in the bedroom and then in the living room we've got a bit of a grey, blue and yellow colour scheme so that's probably where I'm going to put like my very beautiful Neural Spark and my Persephone books, they will fit really nicely in my living room. We are also going to have some shelves in our hallway so I'm probably going to have a little area there for all my kind of um, gender, women, uh, feminism sort of books. I, I quite like to keep them all together because I think that's a non-fiction topic and I, I'd quite like that on display um, in one place. Question six is what books have you always meant to read and never gotten round to or is there anything that you feel embarrassed that you haven't read yet? I don't think there's any book that I feel embarrassed about because really we can't read everything um, and there's a lot of classics that I haven't read, like I haven't read Moby Dick yet 
um, I haven't read all of the Bronte sisters, of which there isn't very much, but I've not read any Anne Bronte, I've not read all of Jane, Jane Austen's work. An author that I have been meaning to read for ages is Donna Tartt, and I have The Secret History and The Goldfinch downloaded on my Kindle, and I haven't read either of them yet, um, because they're just both so long, <laughs> and that is the honest reason. But I've been really looking forward to reading Donna Tartt, and I've been meaning to get to her, and just haven't. Question seven is a book that you felt you were supposed to like but didn't and any book that you, you put down without finishing. So um, this is like my answer every time but I really, really disliked The Book Thief and I know everyone else really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I'm not gonna keep talking about how much I like The Book Thief because this is just going to become a very anti-Book Thief channel otherwise but I, I hated The Book Thief. But the last book that I put down without finishing was probably The Bronze Horseman by, I don't even care who it's by, I can't even, be bothered to look it up. This was just shockingly bad. I, it's about 800 pages long as well, and I really, I really tried. I got about 300 pages through, which to me is like the length of a normal sized book. So I feel like I tried. If you want to really truly understand how dreadful this book is, then please go over to Sam's channel, Thoughts on Tones, and she has a wonderful, awful review about everything that she hated in that book, and that, that, that review just gave me life. I was just like, yes, these are all my thoughts. Number eight is what kind of stories are you drawn to and are there any that you steer clear of? Um, I had to have a bit of a think about this because I don't think there's any particular tropes that I'm really drawn to. I guess stuff that's really focused on people and about their lives and uh, you know ab about the way they see the world and whether that's someone who's very similar to me, someone that I can relate to or if it's someone who has a completely um, different background to myself. I think those kinds of personal stories are the things that I really enjoy. Something that I steer clear of, I suppose, is crime and thriller writing, but then, you know, it's not that I wouldn't read a crime novel, it's just something that I don't, I'm not drawn to, I guess. I mean, I'm not really overly drawn to crime and action-y movies either. Or am I? I don't, I don't know really. <laughs> it's like anything, isn't it? Like I will watch an action movie if it's a really good action movie and I guess I will read a book of any genre if that book itself is well written. So I don't think there's anything I, I particularly avoid. Question nine is, is there any book that you would require the president to read? And um, I'm gonna go with Prime Minister on this one. And I would like the Prime Minister to read What's the Point of School by Guy Claxton. This is non-fiction and it's more of a thesis really. Guy Claxton unravels um, what we think school is for and the reasons people go to school. Do we actually go to school in order to learn facts? Are there specific facts that we should learn? Or is it much more about learning how to learn and learning resilience and, and all that kind of stuff? Like what do you want someone to be like when they come out of school? And I'm quite interested in educational theory and the psychology of education. And there always seems to be a, a lot of debate about the state of education in the UK, always. People always say that it's, it's, it's going down the drain and I really think a different approach to education uh, from the government would actually would actually help a lot. And finally, question 10 is what do you plan to read next? So I am currently reading Ruby by Cynthia Bond because this is on the Bailey's Prize uh, for Women's Fiction shortlist. So I will be reading um, all six of the, of the shortlist for the Bailey's Prize in the next month or so. So um, currently reading Ruby, I'll probably get on to the rest of the shortlist um, very soon. But something else that I will be reading shortly is the next book in the Feminist Orchestra Book Club, which is a Goodreads book group um, that Jean over at Bookish Thoughts started. I will leave the link in the description if you are interested in, in taking a look. And the pick of the month next month is going to be Who Fears Death by Nadia Korafa. So I'm going to be reading that very shortly as well. So there we go, guys, those are my answers. I'm going to link all of those questions below if you want to have a go at doing this tag yourself. I'm not going to tag anyone specifically because it feels like everyone's had to go at this tag already now. Um, I'm a little bit late getting to it, but I really enjoyed these questions and I think this tag is a really interesting one to watch. So if you would like to do it then, but by all means say that I tagged you. <laughs> if you're not someone who makes videos, I would love to hear your answer to these questions in the comments below. And if you're new, you can subscribe uh, for future videos by clicking the little red button in the bottom left-hand corner of this video. And I will see you next time. Bye. I really, really enjoyed this collection. It's 11 short stories, all of which focus on the themes of growing up and not necessarily growing up, more like the loss of innocence, kind of the moment you realize the world is more complicated than maybe, maybe it seemed, the moment people lose their naivety.